Hey everybody and welcome to OBS Today. Hey. I am with Jesse <laughs> and my name is Kendra mm -hmm. and we just love getting to start our weeks off with y'all. For real. Uh, we're on Facebook and mm -hmm. Instagram and so we just love chatting with you guys and seeing what you were doing this weekend. Yeah. And so just to get a little conversation started, Jesse, what was your favorite thing about this weekend? Um, so this weekend my husband is working out of town so I got to go visit him so that was really great. <gasps> I didn't see him for two weeks, so it was just super nice to go and see him, and yeah. then um, he's staying with a couple of guys while they're working on a job right now, and I love those boys too, so it was just really fun to that just is spend fun. time with them. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. What did love you do? That. Um, super low-key. Super low-key week. Yeah. Weekend. Um, just hung out with my aunt and my sister and a friend, oh. and then I saw John Chris last night, and I saw, let's see, I saw Kyla oh. um, was there, one of our lovely volunteers, and I saw another volunteer was in a picture with her, Kristen, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so it was just a grand old time. John Chris is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> totally suggest y'all go check him out. I just think he's so funny. Oh, yeah. He's, he's I, really cool. I don't know anything about him, but everyone loves him here. Yes. Like everybody loves him. Yeah, we're a big fan of John mm -hmm. Chris. He's like a clean comedian, you know? And I think that's... Which is rare. Let's be, let's be honest, it's, it's so rare. We can all appreciate it. Now, you have to have a little tough skin. Sometimes he might offend a little bit, but he just makes fun of the things that we all do. Yeah. So, yeah. Other than he's that, y'all. Yeah. Keeps us humble. humble. So. Um, so we are actually starting a new online Bible study yep. April 1st, mm -hmm. and we are all very excited about it because one of the biggest prayer requests we get here at Proverbs 31 is about marriage. Yeah. And so we heard y'all, so we are doing a marriage study, Yay. and we couldn't be more excited. And so Miss Jessie is leading us through the study for ah. one week on the blog, and it's called Keep Showing Up. How to Stay Crazy in Love When Your Love Drives You Crazy by yep. Karen Eman. Now, if you are a single gal like myself, don't tune out. <laughs> I promise I have a message that is for the masses. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that we told you about this study. And Jessie, yeah. what are you most excited for when you are going to lead us through study? Yay. Well, so first of all, this is, I've been married for three whopping months at this moment. Um, so this is my very first marriage study, so I'm just super excited to get to do this and get to participate. Um, but there's a section in the book that I really related to, and it's setting your marriage up for success. And so I really related to that a lot because I'm in such a brand new season, and I want to make sure that I'm starting with the right habits and the right patterns and making sure that I'm honoring my husband um, the way he wants to be honored. And so I'm just oh, that's so sweet. super excited to... Study. That's really sweet. Yeah. I love that you're doing that because I'm sure if I, um, when I get married, I'll think we'll have it all together. When really I need to go in the mindset of, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot to learn. And so I like that. It's very much like taking other people's advice because they've obviously been doing this. Even yeah. like something so small, I got a lot of advice for the wedding, oh, and it was like yes. sit down. It was like sit down and make sure you eat a piece of your cake. And I did. Because obviously these people <laughs> went through their wedding day. They went through this really stressful season and they missed out. And I want to yeah. listen to that advice. And so what better advice to listen Ooh. to? Yeah. So we're going to be studying it for five weeks yeah. starting April 1st. We'll go ahead and post the link for you so you have it in case you'd like to learn more about it. And yeah. then you can get the book in our bookstore. Yeah. But um, as a single gal, I read it with our staff mm -hmm. because we have to pull a lot of content. And um, <laughs> I learned something from this marriage study. Some sneak peeks. <gasps> Some sneak for Kendra. <laughs> yes, exactly. That I think we can apply to every relationship yeah. in our life. And so that's what I'm going to share with you today. The title of the message is Stop, mm -hmm. Notice, Notice, Address, Address. <laughs> That's good, Jesse. I love that. I know. I'm that just really good. talented. On the fly. Yes. Yeah, so stop, notice, address. All right? And so in Keep Showing Up, it's all about being in a relationship. Mm -hmm. And we have relationships all around us. We have yeah. family relationships. Mm -hmm. We have working relationships. We have friendships. Yeah. And so I think, I don't want to speak for y'all, <laughs> but... um. Would you say, Jesse, that you overcomplicate relationships? Oh, 100. 100. <laughs> I'm always mentally um, processing everything probably a lot longer and more mm -hmm. detailed than I need to. Yes. I feel like I'm always thinking and always overanalyzing everything. I do that, too. Yeah. And another thing I do is I try to fix every single problem that mm -hmm. people bring to me. Yeah. Um, and so when somebody, woman. <laughs> when somebody <laughs> talks, <laughs> right, like, say mm -hmm. you bring me something, I, like, start tuning you out because I'm like, okay. So here's what I think she should do. I'm like coming up with a plan of you action. You really do do that. I know. Yeah. So I'm trying to get better. Okay. <laughs> That's good, so thank you. Thank you. Good job. 
Thanks, you're very, very kind. So what I saw in Keep Showing Up, um, it got me into scripture because there's scripture all throughout mm -hmm. it. And Jesus, who better to learn from everybody, um, <laughs> actually modeled what I'm going to present to you all today. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to look at two stories, both have to deal with interactions that Jesus had with mm -hmm. people, and he had the same theme all throughout, mm -hmm. all right? Yep. So if you have your Bibles, we're going to be looking at mm -hmm. Luke 19, and it's the story of Zacchaeus. Now, when I gave this message to our O team, I sang the song, and so I think it's only appropriate oh, that no. I sing the song to y'all. Do you know it? No. I know. I did, everybody okay. sang it. Everybody sang it on the call, and I was like, mm. Didn't grow up in church. No, no, that's okay. That's okay. So I'll just sing a little snippet so you can kind of get a picture of who Zacchaeus was. Zacchaeus was a wee little man and a wee little man was he. He climbed up in the sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. Okay. Nice. Great. So what we gather from that song is he was a, he was a small man. Mm -hmm. Um, and so he heard that Jesus was coming to his town of Jericho. So in order to see him over the crowd of people, mm -hmm. He climbed up in a tree, all right? So I think that was a smart move, so you can get a good view of what's going on. And so as Jesus was walking through, Jesus did three things. One, Jesus stopped, mm -hmm. which I think is very interesting, because I'm sure he had a place he was, like, headed towards mm -hmm. somewhere, right? He had to go somewhere. But he stopped, yeah. and then he noticed Zacchaeus. Mm -hmm. In the midst of all the people and all the maybe chaos that was going on, he noticed Zacchaeus in a yeah. tree. And then he addressed Zacchaeus. So... I think it's very interesting that he not only stopped and noticed, but he took time out of his day mm -hmm. to speak to Zacchaeus. And so they had a little conversation. Jesus was like, hey, come on down from there. That's a paraphrase. I don't really know if he said it like hey, that. Hey, you. <laughs> come come down. over here. And then um, Jesus actually said, I want to come to your house. And Zacchaeus mm -hmm. was like, all right, let's do it. So we don't really know what happened behind um, yeah. the closed door, mm -hmm. but what we do know is Zacchaeus went in a tax collector, and tax collectors back in the day were not well-liked people. Yeah. Um, Zacchaeus took a little more than he was supposed to take, and so he was not very well-liked. So he entered a tax collector, but he left a changed mm -hmm. man. Yeah. And I believe one of the reasons why was because Jesus stopped what he was doing, yeah. he noticed Zacchaeus, and then he addressed Zacchaeus where he was. Jesus didn't say, like, you're a tax collector, you need to repent. Mm -hmm. Like, Jesus just wanted to get to know him, and through that interaction, yeah. Zacchaeus left a changed man. Yeah. So I love that we see that little transitional in Luke 19. And so then, example number two, we're going to turn to John 8, and that's where we see the adulterous woman. Mm. And we see the exact same pattern of stopping, noticing, and addressing yeah. um, here as well. So Jesus was just about to sit down to teach. Um, and as he was just about to teach, a group brought an adulterous woman to him. Yeah. And they were like, Jesus, what should we do? Um, asking him, you know, what, how should this, this woman be addressed or how, what, how should we treat her? Yeah. And so Jesus stopped what he was doing. He stopped teaching. Yeah. And he noticed the situation mm -hmm. going on around him. And what I love about this is Jesus didn't speak right away. He actually bent down and he started writing something in the sand, mm -hmm. which we don't know what he wrote. We're not yeah. exactly sure what that is. But he didn't speak right away. And I think that's what I was talking about in the beginning mm -hmm. of this message is when somebody comes to me, I think I need to give them answers and like speak mm -hmm. to them and, and have everything ready yeah. and set to go. Yeah. But Jesus actually didn't even talk for a few minutes. Um, and mm -hmm. then he got up and he addressed the people and he said, this is John 8, 7, let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. I love that story. And a, isn't that a beautiful story? I love it. And immediately the stones began to drop. Mm -hmm. People began to walk away and Jesus addressed the woman yeah. um, right there. It was yeah. just Jesus and the woman and um, he pretty much said, like, go be without sin. Yeah. And she left a changed woman. She was no longer the adulterous woman. Yeah. She left changed, all because he stopped what he was doing, he noticed the situation, yeah. and he addressed her right yeah. where she was. And I think that's just a simple way that we can go about our relationships, mm -hmm. um, and hopefully we can change the trajectory, maybe not of somebody's life by just stopping what you're doing, we but can. yeah, we could we change can. just maybe their day, how their, their emotions... Mm -hmm. I don't know, just yeah. something about it, all because of Jesus' model of stopping, noticing, and addressing. Yeah, and it's funny, too, when Jake and I first started dating, I noticed um, how different we were, mm -hmm. duh, of course, but um, how we dealt with conflict was something that we quickly learned was very, very different, where I was jumping in mm -hmm. and, like, wanted to talk about it and was emotional and, like, 
blah, 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 like yes. talking, talking, talking. And I noticed Jake would sit for like probably five minutes before he would say anything. Like he would listen to the conversation and he would stop talking, which was very aggravating for me. <laughs> I don't I like, like silence. Wrong? But I yeah, the silence. Okay. But he got to sit there and process and think. Yeah. And then he brought the solution to the table. And I just felt like as um, his wife now, I see how great that was. And I feel like I try to do that in other situations because I want to sit and think, not let my emotions get the best of me, yeah. but sit and think and be logical. Um, I think that's smart. Yeah, because I value the people in my life. Like, I don't want to sit here and just throw up all my all of my emotions on you. Like, I want to yeah. sit and, you know, process yeah. and think and then bring the best possible know. solution and talk it out. Yeah. I think that's very, very yeah. smart. But be calm and smart and logical. Calm, cool, and collected. Ooh, good yes. one. Yes. Good one. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, everybody, I hope that just... I don't know, speaks into maybe a relationship that you're dealing with, whether that's family or coworker or yep. friend um, or even your husband. I just hope that gives you maybe just some steps to take mm -hmm. if you find yourself in a situation like that. But yep. if you want to learn more tidbits like that, um, you know, to keep being crazy in love when your love drives you crazy, keep showing, keep showing up. Starts April 1st. We hope you join us. Once you do sign up, you will get a welcome email with three steps you can do to help you prep for April 1st. That comes from Melissa. Taylor, yep. who is the Senior Director of Online Bible Studies in First Five, and we just can't wait to study with y'all. Yay! Yay. Uh, oh. That's right. All right, everyone. Fun fact, what you're going to see now is a little behind the scenes <laughs> because only Jesse and I are in today from our Online Bible Studies team. The other ones are working off-site, and so Jesse's going to oh, get, get up, up and, turn and turn it off, all right? <laughs> but a little behind the scenes of what's happening. So thank y'all so much for joining us, Bye, and we'll see y'all later. <laughs> Isn't this so much fun? Love it.